morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for joining. It's the morning market review with myself, Russell Shaw. I'm a senior market specialist at FXM. Today is Monday. It's the 17th of October. It's the first webinar of the week. So thank you very much for signing in. I'm just going to bring up our disclaimers. And um, just while I have this on screen, can I just do a sound check and just make sure that you guys are seeing the screen. Uh, again, just a bit nervous <clears throat> that, um, okay, awesome. Excellent. All right, here's the market commentaries disclaimer. Keep this on screen for a few moments as well. All right, and just our references, MarketScope, TradingView, and Bloomberg. I'm going to put it on uh, TradingView. This is the real rate, which I think is interesting. We'll talk about it in a moment. Let's just get through the five things to start your day. I'll try to get through it as quick, quickly as possible. Uh, the first headline reads, waiting for U-turns. The pound rose as much as 0.9% in Asian trading as investors, as investor confidence was bolstered by expectations that more of Prime Minister Liz Truss's package of unfunded tax cuts may be reversed. The newly, appoint, the newly appointed Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, said in a BBC interview that nothing was off the table when it came to potentially abandoning more of the Premier's planned measures. Still, the pound remain, remains vulnerable and the end of the Bank of England's emergency bond buying program on Friday could reduce further, further ructions in guilt. While markets will be testing beleaguered, trust her fate ultimately rests with a conservative party that has a scrambling to save her job. Next headline reads, uh, stands its ground. President Xi Jinping had a clear message to those who want to thwart China's rise, you will fail. In a speech running almost two hours on Sunday, she let the world know that China wouldn't change course even in the face of dangerous storms and in a more, and in a more hostile world. The Chinese leader hailed the nation's fighting spirit and said the country was well positioned for pursuing development and ensuring security. Xi's remarks indicate that China is ready to steer down a growing challenge from the US under President Joe Biden, who has moved to hinder Beijing's ability to access advanced technology and sought to deter any military action against Taiwan. Uh, next headline, energy crisis. The European Union's executive arm plans to propose a mechanism to curb price, volati price volatility on the bloc's biggest gas marketplace and prevent extreme price sparks in derivative trading to rein in the region's energy crisis. The temporary mechanism designed by the European Commission would impose a dynamic price limit for transactions on the Dutch title transfer facility, whose main index is the benchmark for all gas traded in the continent. Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said earlier this month that the TTF no longer reflects the bloc's energy reality after Russia cut supplies to Europe. The Commission has been under mounting pressure from national governments to impose a cap on gas prices. Just uh, two more headlines here. Beyond the turmoil, investors are looking beyond a looming global recession and they see one country and its financial markets emerging strongest on the other side. US stocks and bonds will lead the way out of the current wave of market turmoil, according to respondents in the latest MLIV Pulse survey. Meanwhile, they reckon it's close to an even bet as to whether the UK economy or the euro area will fall into a slump first. Just going to. Uh, um, jump to the next headline. Not over yet, French Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne called on striking refinery workers to return to work as fuel so shortages worsened and left-wing politicians led a protest march against increased cost of living expenses. It's not normal that a minor minority of workers continue to block the country, Bourne said in an interview. She cited salary agreements signed last week by other unions that represent most workers at the companies though the CGD union remains on strike. All right, just going through to what we're looking at this uh, uh, 
today. European stocks are poised to drop following bleak sessions in Asia and Wall Street, and as traders assess, mes uh, assess messaging from China's Communist Party, EU foreign ministers meet in Luxembourg and Russia's intensifying mobilization efforts for its war on Ukraine. The Paris Motor Show returns after two years of cancellations due to the pandemic. Expected data include UK house prices and Danish producer prices. Sandvik and Bank of America report earnings while Rio, Rio Tinto issues its third quarter operations review. All right. Let's take a look and see what, what we have here. All right. So we're starting off with the the real rate. Uh, this is the um, this is the U.S. Uh, real rate, but it's it's actually um, served pretty well as a as a global um, indicator. Um, I want to just draw your attention to this HT question mark. So that's um, higher trough question mark, and we actually um, have to leave the question mark in here. We don't have the three conditions right. So um, if we put in a arrow here just to highlight condition one, um, yeah, condition one. So this would be the lowest low in at least three candles. Uh, here's condition two. This is last week's candle. Okay, so we've got condition two, but we didn't get condition three, which is everything, right? If you get condition three, you get condition two, but we don't have condition three. Um, in other words, we don't have confirmation that there is a higher trough here. Um, so that's interesting. So we've still got this um, HD question mark. Now, let's take a look at this with a contra um, analysis, contra view. What about last week's candle as a potential reference candle, but to the but to the um, berry side? In other words, what happens if last week's candle um, is condition one? And then uh, let's take this line and put, put it there, right? Now we've got a different scenario in our hands. Now this may be um, an actual swing high. And if it's a swing high, right, then we're getting the potential for a, uh, a clearance here, which is, uh, which is a scenario that we've been looking at. Because the RSI tends to follow um, something called the Pareto principle. In other words, 80% of its time is spent between 20 and 80. Only 20% of its time, it's either above 80 or below 20. So at some stage, it's going to revert to that Pareto principle. It can't spend um, forever above 80. So the question is, well, when's that going to happen? And that's the difficulty because um, the timing, as we saw on a, on a weekly chart, can take weeks um, to, to clear these um, excess, uh, the excess. But um, I think one way we can monitor to see if this is a contra or if the uh, HT uh, question mark is still in play uh, beg your pardon, let me just put an arrow in here again. So this is the kind of um, dynamic, which way we're we gonna go, uh, completion for the up arrow or completion for the down arrow. Uh, they mean completely different things. Um, so let's keep an eye on that now. Let's just, to complete this thought, just to complete this thought, um, let's just talk about last week's sentiment and then let's just talk about the sentiment to start this week because it actually makes the, I think it highlights the complexity of the situation. So if we take a look at last week's candle, well, what kind of candle is it? And I think it's fairly obvious that we can see that it's a, um, a doji. In other words, it's a candle of uncertainty. Um, we have um, rates so a bulls pushing price up to the high and they lose control we've got bears pushing price down to last week's low but they lose control where do we end 
we, we end the week flat. So whilst the Bulls and the Bears each try to get a um, an upper hand, neither really succeeded. So there's a certain amount of uncertainty that um, um, that's obvious there. Uh, and that continues actually into this week. But of course, this week's only just starting. So um, the analysis here is far from complete. But at the moment, it's an inside candle, which is also a sign of uncertainty. Um, and just to explain the sentiment there, bulls have not had the um, the strength or the will to take out last week's high. But in the same breath, we can say, well, the bears haven't had the um, strength or the will to take price below last week's low. So neither is in control. We're in a um, sort of a equilibrium for now, uh, which I don't think is going to last, right? So the question is, well, which way um, does the market go? Who's going to gain control? Is it going to be the bulls? Or is it going to get, or is it going to be the bears? And the truth of the matter is, there may be a slight, uh, sort of slightly shorter odds to bet that the bears take control Based on this overboard condition now, um, we don't want to get fixated on that because anything can happen, right? We're still in this high, um, highly um, inflated economy. And we know that the central banks are fighting tooth and nail to get that under control. However, all right, if there is a bearish um, bias as the week develops, I think then the uh, dollar takes a knock. Okay. Uh, now this is we're talking this what what we're saying a supposition. N none of this uh, may happen. We are really in a um, as Zanetta puts it, we're in a very indecisive start to the week. Okay. So we need to keep an eye on that. This indecision is going to again just uh, last week i think um it was obvious to see it's a difficult market environment that difficulty continues into this week specifically now because we've got to try to we've got to figure out which way the market's going to go I'm not that clear um let's take a look at the uh, us dollar I just want to open up my market scope. Seems to have closed. Bear with me a moment. But I'll bring the US dollar up over here in the meanwhile. And we can start looking top down. All right, so um, we've got the, the, actually the dollar last week ended a lot stronger than the real rate. Um, we did get that, we did get that um, higher trough in. Uh, that's interesting. So uh, let's just put that in. Okay, so there's the higher trough in the in the dollar, but I still think uh, we watch that real rate. I think it's going to take its cues from the uh, from the real rate. Um, let's just go, let's go down here to the uh, the daily. Do some um, analysis on the daily.
All right, so we can uh, put in some peaks and troughs here. So this is on the uh, on the dollar. And remember, um, the question that was asked just a moment ago was, which way does the real rate go? I said the odds seem shorter to me that we see some sort of reduction. Um, again, it's it's hypothesis. We're going to see how it turns out for the week, um, just based on that overbought condition. Um, perhaps. Perhaps we see some sort of reflection of that in the in the dollar. Um, we'll have to see how it evolves for the week, but we've got a peak here. Got off here. Okay. We've got a lower peak here. And uh, this lower peak here, perhaps suggestive, perhaps suggestive of that um, of the short odds for a push down in the real rate. Um, in other words, the lower peak perhaps showing some sort of um, resistance. The question is, do we get a movement down here, or do we get a movement here? So. This is a uh, again exercise for the week. Do we see the dollar continue to push higher, or is this lower peak perhaps suggestive of uh, of something? Okay, here's market scope. All right, this will make the analysis a little easier. All right, so let's go back to the US dollar here. So we saw the uh, the lower the lower peak. Let's just take a look at it in terms of the zones. So here's the peak. Okay, here's the trough. All right, here's the lower peak. And now you can see we're on the border of zone one and zone two. So if we, st if we drop from zone one into zone two, then perhaps this lower peak is um, indicative of uh, something. Perhaps it's suggesting that there is going to be a pullback in the the real rates. Uh, let's just go down to the hourly here, and uh, the hourly here again does indicate some greenback weakness, doesn't it? Okay, so you can see we've got the the crossovers to the downside. Now we are we are on pivot support, so we clearly got to watch that. But if the stochastic falls below 20 and holds, uh, well, that uh, clearly would be a sign of uh, um, downside bias. Then we see if we've dropped back into zone two, then maybe this lower peak is um, is valid. Then we've got to go back to the real rates and see if those real rates are starting to normalize on the RSI. And if that is the case, then we're going to have a very interesting uh, market sentiment. Then what I would suggest is that the market becomes risk on for as long as um, the real rate is clearing. So we just want to be mindful that any sort of bullishness at the moment is really an overbought condition that's clearing. It's not a change in fundamentals. It's more a technical um, a technical clear out, so to speak. And um, we also got earnings season. So we have to watch the earnings. The banks, they, were, they weren't the best results, but they're better than I thought they were going to be, right? So um, that in of itself may prompt some portfolio managers or some market movement to look for uh, really savaged uh, companies, but good companies. So uh, there may be some movement there. And um, what we can do is just have a look at DAX. OK, 
Okay. So um so the DAX weekly is still in downtrend. Um there certainly is resistance here. However, I think it's going to take its uh cue from what's happening in that real rate. So we've got uncertainty in that real rate. Doji followed by inside day. However, we've got that overbought condition. The question is is that overbought condition going to clear because of Pareto principle? If it does, okay, well, you can see that there is some blue on the screen. Again, um, this is a weekly. We can't read too much of it on a Monday morning, but um, we want to just see if it takes out this resistance area. Okay, this is the daily. So now the daily is um, showing that um, the risk market is threatening to go into the bullish area. Take a look at the momentum. Okay. Momentum pushing towards that upper quintile. So that's interesting now. It seems to be the way the market playing out. Again, very early to say with any sort of um, um, I guess to make it sort of a concrete type of um, um, theory, would have to see the market give us more. But it's a um, it's a start of um, what looks like bullish um, bullish sentiment. We'll have to see how this evolves over the the rest of the week. Take a look at the hourly. So the hourly here is getting very interesting. Crossover. Crossover. Does it make it through to the upper quintile and does it hold? Um, we've got to beat central pivot. We've got to beat R1, which has got um, a confluence here, doesn't it? It's got this price resistance. So there's two types of resistance here. But I think that the key driver here, the key driver here is real rate. What's going to happen with that real rate? Um, let's see if we get the angle in separation on the EMAs. Let's see if the stochastic makes its way through to 80. So there are elements of risk on that are starting to see through just at the beginning of the week. Whether they have legs or not, that is the tricky part. That's what we're going to have to monitor. Now, um, if DAX is showing signs of support, if dollar is showing signs of uh, um, weakness, what's happening on the uh, euro front? Let's go through the euro. I think that the weekly here um, is probably um, an inappropriate part of this analysis because when I say inappropriate, I must be careful what I say. Yes, it's in a downtrend and the downtrend is going to continue for as long as the uh, peaks and troughs suggest it should. But given the um, what looks like to be a run sentiment merging, maybe the daily is something uh, to focus on for the time being. Um, you're certainly not as positive as the previous chart we saw, which was the DEX. Uh, it is um, above zone three, but it's still very much in neutral. Um, if the data takes a um, skew from a, um, a weaker real rate, uh, I would expect Euro to be a beneficiary to that. Um, something to keep an eye on okay we, we haven't seen the um we haven't seen the start of of any positive movement yet in fact this is um sitting in no man's land isn't it so uh, let's just take a look at the hourly mm, not the most convincing see this uh, central pivot here is acting um as a key resistor let's take a look at cable All right, so cable, um, I think, needs to be on the watch list. We, we'll work from the bottom up here. We've got um, a positive cross here. You've got a positive cross here. And you actually got your momentum starting to move in. Um, this is 
fraught with danger because of the um, the politics at work here. You know, um, it's there's still a certain amount of um, risk around that that could um, influence the market. So, yes, this is certainly a very um, um, interesting chart. Something that we should be monitoring. Just obviously understand the uh, drivers behind that. Let's take a look at the. See, this is looking stronger than the euro, isn't it? So you can see, whilst the euro was very neutral, uh, this is on the border of neutral and positive. And uh, if it gets above the um, the blue line, yeah, it goes into zone one, and the stochastic does go into um, the yeti. If it does do that and holds, well, then the market's responding positively to the U turn, isn't it? And um, certainly something to uh, to keep our eyes on. Um, let's just take a look at the um, the S and P, just because it's earnings season, and I think we can uh, conclude here unless there's uh, any questions. But I'm just going to bring up the S and P 500, and you can see that the um, S and P also got that. So, right, what tilt risk on? Yeah. The key question is, does it make its way to 80 and hold? And if it does, I bet we'll see a, um, a pullback in the, in the real rate. The daily chart yet is not looking um, as strong as the previous chart. Um, the DAX was looking um, much stronger. However, on a relative basis, um, if it makes a movement from zone three into zone two, well, that's relatively strong. It's not bullish. It's just a, a movement from weak into neutral is a positive step. And then does it go into zone one? And if it goes into zone one, do we stick out? I mean, do we do we get to 80 and stick around in 80? And then we get that, I'm going to call it a dead cat bounce for now. We'll, we'll have to monitor it. But the thought, or my thoughts going into Q4 was um, that there is a strong probability of a dead cat bounce going into Q4. Um, I don't want to get caught up in that. Um, I don't want to make. It, I don't want to um, sound like I'm predicting it. I, I'm not. I don't know if there's going to be a uh, a dead cat bounce. It just seem, seemed um, that there was a strong probability because of the overbought real rate. So the real rate is really the the whole key behind the the hypothesis. If it remains overbought, then I'm wrong. Then the, uh, the 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 bearish pressure continues. If there's a pullback, Q4 becomes remarkably interesting because it throws um, a lot of stress at market psychology, and that's going to be very interesting to um, to monitor. All right, I think that's where we shall uh, conclude for this morning. It's obviously um, this is the uh, the theory, the thesis that we're going to be monitoring for the rest of the week. Are, um, are we onto something? Um, are we completely wrong? So it's going to be a very interesting week. Uh, let me just see. There's a question here from Gurdeep. Uh, Gurdeep saying, a lot of commentators are saying a dead cat bounce could be contrarian. Um, yes. It, it definitely could be good. I, I, just to reiterate, I think Q4 um, is, a, in my opinion, a very complex analysis. Um, whether we can navigate it successfully or not is really going to be um, very interesting. Um, I think that the real rate, the monitoring of the real rate, you know, has served us pretty well until this point. Um, I'm going to remain using that as um, sort of the linchpin of the analysis, and we'll see we'll see how it uh, how it works out. 
but there's no doubt the complexities here are massive, massive. Um, and I think we've got to, um, you know, um, be quite, what's the right word? Um, modest. Is that the right word? Um, modest is not the right word. Uh, we just got to be really respectful. The market can do anything it's, that it's going to do. Um, yeah, <laughs> he's saying he heard more mention of the median CPI. Yeah, so Larry Summers, who is a absolute heavyweight when it comes to um, economics, says that he watches the uh, the median CPI, and he watches uh, the trimmed um, the trimmed uh, series as well. So uh, I'm extremely chuffed that we kind of in in there with Larry Summers. <laughs> um, uh, yes, I did get the uh, email with the uh, the monthly chart. Let me take a look at that again, Zanetta. I'll, I'll, I'll reply uh, during the course of the day. Um, All righty. Is Larry on webinar? Um, he, I think he made it in an interview to um, Bloomberg. Uh, so I, I don't know. He, he, I don't think he's on webinar, but uh, I think that his interview will be recorded. <laughs> um, all righty. Uh, let's let us conclude at this point, guys. Uh, we shall um, speak tomorrow. Have a good day, a good evening ahead, and uh, we'll touch base again tomorrow morning. Thanks very much, guys.